Hey, welcome back to Garbeardia. This is Garbrew, and I have more questions for Guard Talk. Now, if you don't know what Guard Talk is, it's been a community request for quite a while now where you guys send me questions and I answer them raw, unfiltered, and unedited. So that's how this thing is. This is a long form of me talking about your problems. Um, got some pretty good ones today that are some pretty real life issues that a lot of people deal with uh, on the daily probably so we'll go ahead and get to those so the first one is about something that all military personnel will probably have an opinion on and that is do you have a complicated opinion on the afghanistan withdrawal if yes can you tell us if no can you tell us more in depth about your military career where you serve unit type etc Share whatever you are comfortable telling us about, and how come you like and how come you like the Daewoo K2 instead of the AK? Uh, so, from, from, from yeah, so I, I I I know who you are, but I won't say what your name is because of the video format. So, it's one of those things where you know the the, the Afghan war. It's uh, it was never gonna be an easy win if we could ever win that because in order to like, in order for a place for like Afghanistan to be called, you know, won or conquered. I mean, you you have to conquer. You have to go in and control it wholesale. And that's something people have lost a flavor for. People don't want to be a imperial nation anymore. They don't want to control nations. They want to nation build, quote unquote. And there's a lot of, uh, how do you say, cultural things with Afghanistan that... I mean, a lot of us knew it was doomed from the start. I mean, people wanted to go in there and, and give them like these these schools and all that and help train their military. But if you spent even an hour or two reading about you know Middle Eastern uh, military cultures, especially Afghanistan, um, that <laughs> it it was never going to go well, and it, it never was. I equate Afghanistan to Vietnam, where in order to absolutely win that war, you need to completely decimate your enemy wholesale and then literally control their conquered lands. It's why Rome did what they did. Rome knew that in order to actually control a place, you have to conquer it. You must subjugate it. And our country is not really into subjugation. I mean... Well, <laughs> I guess there are a few uh, tinfoil hats to be like, well, they clearly are, and a few political activists saying we're you know, an imperialistic nation. But more or less, true colonization, true decimation, true subjugation, not many countries can really have the taste for. I mean, it's, it's kind of frowned upon. That, that time has passed. And, I mean, are we... I won't say we, but a lot of people with my mindset in the military knew that eventually we were going to move out of that country. It, it, it just was going to happen. We were going to leave eventually. What I take issue with is the absolutely horrendous way we did it. It was tactless. It was spineless. It's there, There's leaving and then there's skidding out at the dead of night and leaving all your shit. I mean, we left so much shit behind. It was unprofessional. The biggest issue is that it was an unprofessional withdrawal that kind of besmirched our name as a nation, really. And it was all done by fucking Brandon. I mean, the, I mean, the biggest issue is, is just a lot of us knew we were going to leave. It was, it was in the cards. We we're going to build the military and say, you guys have this. This is your responsibility. And then leave. But the leaving part was so bad and distasteful and if I may say so disgraceful it was just it, it made all of us look bad and that comes down to the decision of one man and it is what it is military career I was a military police officer with fourth with the uh, 10th mountain fourth brigade uh, battalion brigade special troops battalion uh, MP combat unit and that's it is what it is um a lot of stuff happened. <laughs> it's old news to me. And how come you like the Daewoo K2? So the, the AK... The Daewoo is tighter. It's still piston-driven. It uses a stand egg magazine. It's a simple button push. It's, it's simply it's simply better than the AK all the way around. It's, it's, it's got a bolt catch. 
It's, you know, it doesn't rattle around. You can mount optics to it pretty easily because it's, I mean, it's just more solid. Say what you want about the AK, I, I get it, but is to me, the AK is simply inferior to the Daewoo K2. It just simply is. Um, if the Daewoo K2 shot a 7.62x39, it would just decimate the AK. There'd be, no, there'd be no reason to have the AK except for, like, I guess, um, pride of what your nation made, but yeah, it's just the AK just doesn't run as well as the Daewoo K2. <laughs> that's my opinion on it. I like to stay anonymous if that's chill, of course it is. Um, so I'm a huge nerd when it comes to world lore and detail. I love looking at cultures and history. So my question is a little weird, but what is but what is considered love in the veil? We have seen a lot of couples in the story, so I wonder if the issue has even come up. This is not about forcing inclusive ideas for the sake of it. Those always fail and simply pander to an insulting manner to those included. <laughs> I'm simply wondering if anyone even cares about who someone loves, be it a race, gender, or birth world, as it always brings more realism in. I so, um, I get your question. So, love is love on the, on the veil side. That, that is true. However, love comes to a, to, a, to a pinnacle when it comes to cross-race relations. And I'm explaining that because, you know, in, 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 in my canon, races cannot interbreed as easily as, like, D&D &D 5e. It's simply not. It, it just simply isn't. So there are couples in the Vale who, <clears throat> who, 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 who kind of date or marry other races, <clears throat> but they may become discouraged about the lack of children. So there are times where they will find suitors to, to make children with them instead, usually male to female, um, like, like um, m male spouse to female donors, how it's usually done. And then the child is then reared as their own child. You know, it's kind of how it is. However, there are those who take their marriage seriously and as a mixed race marriage, and then they go above and beyond <laughs> baby making to have that chance of having a a a, a half born child. And there's actually a god named Melanie who um, she is the god of love and, and, and marriage and that kind of stuff. And she absolutely adores mixed ra uh, mi mixed race marriages that, that are able to have a baby because to her, that means their love is so strong and unrequited that they didn't want any other. And they would rather try and try and try until death to have a child than, have least, than, than simply find a donor or adopt or whatever have you. So, I mean, love is, is, is what it is. There, there is love in the veil world, obviously. There, there's marriage and that kind of stuff. There's also same-sex marriages, because that shit just happens. All right, that's how it is. Sometimes you like the same thing that you have. But um, but the god Melanie, who's who's all about, you know... Uh, I think I'll, I'll find you her thing real quick. I can find the... Yeah, there she is. So, there, so, so in the... Combat controller manual. I, I I actually did blurb all the gods, and Melanie is the goddess of love and devotion. That's her thing. She's all about you know making love happen. Um, marriages. She her, like usually her shrines are at um, places of of marriage. Really, people people don't get married in churches. They they get married in uh, like shrines and such. And Melanie's shrine is people go to get married more or less. And in the Veil world, to to have a mixed mix, mix race child is a huge thing because they're actually rare, unlike D&D 5e. A mixed race child means your parents loved each other so much that they would rather, you know, instead of going and finding one of their own race to have a baby with, they'd rather try that hard to have a child together. And then if you're a product of that marriage, you are special. You are actually special because it's really hard to do. And if you are a mixed race child from a, a from a mixed race marriage, um, Melanie Ashley is called the, the 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 favor of Melanie, where you are favored by that specific god, and are kind of watched over. So, there, there, there there's a twist on love in my in, in my cultures where you know there are folks who love each other, but they kind of like well we we need kids you know and they they want to they kind of go the easy route. But true devotion and true love is something that is so special because there, there there are couples in the veil world who tried and tried and tried until they died with no children, and and and, and they're kind of seen as the, this tragic romantic kind of kind of ideal because 
you know, they they, they were kind of you know, it was an uphill battle from the start, but they never stopped trying with each other. And that's considered true love where, you know, true devotion where nothing shall get in our way. And if, and like I said before, if you are a child that is the product of one of these marriages, you are actually special. That marriage is special. You managed to make it work despite the odds. And I, and I didn't make it that way out, out of just spite, like, er, mixed races. No, it's more of a, and it, it makes it less special because you have a dwarf and you have an oni and they are vastly different. I mean, this isn't like, a, like a, a white person ha having like a an, an Asian or a black or whatever sp uh, spouse. This is a dwarf and an oni or a brim touched and like a yamatu. You know, they're they are vastly different in body type and size and configuration. To me, that means it would be a lot harder for them to to have you know to have all the chains linked together. Cor Ooh, uh, sorry, I burped. Linked together correctly. And that's just what I, what, because it seems, that seems logical to me. You know, we have something that's like seven or eight feet tall. Like, I love this little hairy dwarf man to death, you know, and they're so vastly different that it's something, if a product, if you are a half dwarf, half oni, you are a fucking unicorn in, in, in that particular setting. And then, and say that does happen, you know, that's just true love, that despite your differences of the spouses, they still were so devoted to each other that they made a, this half dwarf half oni and then this this person who is these these two races is then favored by melanie who blesses them and kind of guides them through life and kind of makes things easier for them in a way it helps them find love and then specifically because of these genes it's even more um tone it's even more lined down because say you are half oni and half dwarf the only people you can have child, children with are dwarves and oni, so there's literally no way for you to have. So, so, so say, so like, like just the genetics of it all in, in my head. This is not actual science. So, say you're you're half dwarf and half oni, you can literally the only chance you have to have children is with an oni or a dwarf, and that is it. There's no other choices for you. So, Melanie kind of finds you a spouse and like, hey, this is gonna work. I promise, and kind of, you know helps you out in that department and it's that and that's kind of like kind of like, like kind of my canon my, 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 my head culture and how it works and I, I and to me it seems really cool you know because like in dd 5e any any two schmucks can make a half-bred child you know and it's just like that 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 doesn't seem it, it seems less special because like, oh yeah I'm, you got guys going I'm, I'm a quarter dragon a dragonborn quarter human quarter elf quarter dwarf. like that, that, that that's kind of like just making a cocktail person you know like it, it's not as special or unique or as hard you know because if in your setting anyone can bone down and, and, and make something you know just that's radically you know different it's just like the the, 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 the why that doesn't make you special that does it, it kind of ruins the mystique of this kind of thing because these are two cultures intermingling and creating an offspring so i want to i want to take it a, a different direction folks will like it folks will hate it i'm sure someone's going to call me a bigot in the fucking comments but that just is what it is man why the moniker guard bro um someone gave it to me a long time ago and i just kind of roll with it not a very exciting story I, I i've gone through time as many names but guard bro i don't know it just it just fit me pretty good and i liked it and <laughs> that's the short end of that. This one. Holy. I heard you get really bad headaches sometimes and you have ideas slash stories trying to claw their way out. I know this is going to sound like a joke, but maybe you should try a tinfoil hat to see if the source is external. If it works and you don't seem crazy, there's hats you can buy that have EMF insulation. If your headaches are as bad as I've heard, that's at least worth a try. I, I can with 99.9% <laughs> <laughs> Assurance say I'm pretty sure a tinfoil hat is not required. Uh, it's just <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure it's just from my head injuries, bud. <laughs> All of my writing is world and setting building. Any advice in branching out into writing a narrative? Also, how much do I have to simp to get you to review will be posted in the writings channel of Discord. <laughs> Praise the love and pass the ammunition. Um, I mean, I can review my guess. Just be aware that I'm, I'm, I'm going to review you fairly, and you may not 
like what I say, but I, I can go in there and give a poke around and see what happens. As for uh, writing a narrative, I mean, it's simply you put, it's, it's like walking, you put words in front of each other and you just, you just build it up. I mean, there, there's no there's no easy path for you to do a narrative. You simply have to do it. You, because I'm sure you've read books. I'm sure you've read world building books. And literally, you just kind of use those as a template in your head and you build your narrative. You make characters you make events and places and you just go from there and it will flow on its own all you gotta do is just start it out and you'll it'll it'll go it'll, it'll go on its own man you just gotta just gotta start it out and it'll flow I mean, really once you get that tap open it'll flow right out and i think that's i mean just just do it i'm <laughs> just getting there and do it hey guard i am stuck in a cycle of failure and i don't know how to stop it I can see it. I know there's things I should do to change myself or the situation, but it's like I'm paralyzed and locked in to just watch as things burn. I know the pull yourself up by your bootstraps business and all, but I just can't seem to do it, and I hate myself for continuing to let people down. I know it's vague, but any advice would be great. Thanks. So what you're suffering from is a form of depression, because I've been there. It's where... You feel a need to do something, but you can't really urge yourself to do it. And it is, it is the toughest place to be as a human being. It really is. Because this is a very, like, deep down bitter kind of depression. Because you want to change it. You know you need to change, but you just can't move yourself. Now, a doctor is just going to slap a pill on you and say, just get, don't be depressed, stupid and shove pills in your face. But that's like writing a program to fix an issue with, with, with the main program writing. Like, you need to go in and, and fix what's wrong. And when I, I was in this place, I really was. I was, I was in this place a while back. Um, while y'all knew me, for sure, I was in that place where I knew there were things I had to do, but I just couldn't do it. And, my, and, 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 and like watching things burn, I would sit there and I'd watch YouTube for hours hours and hours just just finding videos they didn't want to do what I needed to and I would sit there for 10 12 13 hours just watching videos trying to get time to go by faster so I could go to bed that's what it was I was trying to burn time faster just so I wouldn't have to deal with life and it was a pretty low point, I have to say, in my life, because everyone knew what was going on, but no one really wanted to say something was wrong or that I needed to stop doing what I was doing. And eventually, it, it got to the point where I knew what I was doing was stupid. Like, I'm sitting there going, why the fuck am I watching all these goddamn videos of people I don't even like instead of doing the things I need to do? And, I mean, you ha you have to literally claw yourself, like bloody fingernails claw your way out of your own head and understand that understand where you are understand that you are depressed you are down you are not in the place you want to be and it's baby steps and the, the way I got started was I would make my bed like I, I, would, I would I would literally get I would literally get out of bed roll out make coffee and then sit and I would sit and do nothing I would sit and do nothing for hours. Hours I would do nothing. Just being unproductive. Just the slump of my mind I was in. It was like being stuck in a tar pit. And no matter how much you struggled and wanted to move, you just kept sinking. And I'm sure there are tons of, tons of professionals out there that will tell you one way to another. But you just have to. To start moving your feet you have to and the way I started was I started making my bed in the morning um, I would make my bed and then I'm like hey you know like I did this and then I would and then one day I'd make my bed and then I'd make breakfast or make my bed make breakfast and go to the gym and I would start adding these things kind of slices in line of where they should have been and eventually I built the ladder I needed to pull myself out of that hole. To pull it by your bootstraps is such a simplified term of, of what they actually want you to do. People get stuck in their own heads so often, and I am not innocent of that sin. Uh, 
everyone. That is a trap all of us will fall into, being stuck in our own heads, being stuck in a, a rut, and you just can't pull yourself out. Because, in the end, you want someone else to. So, so I mean, it's, it's just one of those, those truths where you, people want someone else to pull them out of the hole or a pill that can float them out of the hole, but in the end, you will still be in that hole until you yourself can pull yourself out of that hole. And if you don't pull yourself out of that hole, you'll die in it. You will die in this hole, and you'll just be <laughs> miserable until the day the shadows take you. The only person that can help you or anyone who else is in this kind of situation is you. And it's not the answer you want to hear. You want to hear there's some easy way to do it, but it is the most brutal way that you that you, you, you have to do it the most brutal and unsatisfactory way in the beginning. Because you do become satisfied in the end when you finally realize... My God, I'm out of the hole. And, 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 and the sunshine is on your face and you feel the warmth over your skin. But it's a slow, arduous, painful process. It's like an addiction, really. Like you 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 figure out these patterns, these things you do to distract yourself from the fact that you are in the hole. Like with me it was YouTube or I guess be there would also be gambling or video games or drinking or whatever have you like me I, I would I would drink and watch YouTube until the pain was gone and I was numb but you know you can only stay numb for so long you can only stay paralyzed for so long and like you emailer um, you want to you you say you you know I know there's things I should do to change myself or the situation but it's like I'm paralyzed and locked in just to watch this things burn you have to realize where you are. You have to tell yourself what I told myself. There is something wrong here. You know there's something wrong here. And you know you're doing wrong. And you have to tell yourself that. And you have to understand that what you're doing right now is not going to help you. It's not going to help others. It's not going to help you, your wife, your husband, or your kids, or your family. People need you. Someone somewhere needs you to be you. And you start with baby steps. And you have to. Because if you do not, that hole will keep you. And that hole will be your grave. Start with baby steps. Start doing small things. Work your way up. Build your ladder step by step. And as long as you're consistent and have self-motivation and self-determination and self-discipline, you will slowly climb your way out of that hole. You can't just lace up your bootstraps and call it a day. You gotta put on your boots and your hammer and your saw and slowly make that letter, that letter, that ladder one step at a time. And I can't do that for you. Ain't no one can be able to do that for you. Only you can do it. And you just have to do it. Tell yourself that you are in a bad place and you have to change. And these are the ways you have to. And if you need to, either you or others, my email's there. My Discord is there. I am there for you. This is why I'm doing this. I'm not some enigmatic YouTuber who looks down on all these little fish like Mer. No, I am there for you because I have more than likely been where you've been. And it's it's not nice. It's not. And sometimes you just need someone at the top of the hole going, you can do it. You can build that ladder. I will show you how. So if you need more advice, you or anyone else, you know where I am. You know I stream. You, you, ask, you ask me in stream. I don't give a fuck. You know where I am. Just ask me. If need be, I can give you my fucking cell phone number. You can call me and we'll have a chat. I don't care. I've lost too many people to this hole that people find themselves in. And I would rather spend an hour of my day talking to you to make sure you stay alive than having to deal with the fact that one more is gone. And... 
to me, that'd be time well spent. So don't worry about wasting my time. To me, that is time well spent. And to you and everyone else, Garbro is here for you. He'll take care of you. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to take a moment. Um, on to the next question. Um, hey, guards, so I wanted to send you these questions separately, but I ran out of time, so I'm going to squish them all in this email. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, will you ever make a wiki or something like that for both Veil Riders and Emily Bronze? I know the Veil Rider TRPG game manual already has a ton of lore. So, yeah, um, I would like to. I would need help doing it because I don't know how to make wikis. So I, I would love to help in, in that in that endeavor, but I would need your help to make that happen because I don't know how to do wikis. So I, I am more than open to making a Veil Rider and Emily Bronze wiki with pictures and such, but uh, I need you guys to help me out with that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm open to it, but I need help. Have you thought about organizing, hosting, and dimming for a noob, inexperienced Veil Riders TTRPG game because of people who are not just new to Veil... Uh, a lot of patience. So, yeah, um, I'm kind of doing that with... Well, not really with the new to TTRPGs, but Alpha uh, Bravo Squad is new to the Veil Riders. And then um, and then the Sunday game with Nekbeardy is also new to, to, the, to the Veil Riders system. But I don't know how much time I have to run four games. Three is a stretch already, but four, I don't, I don't know if I could... Um, maybe in the future do some one shots, but right now I just don't have the time. Uh, but um, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Could you give some advice for someone like me who hasn't touched a TTRPG ever in his life, but has a great interest in the subject from the Lord of Mechanics behind the games? Um, so <laughs> it's one of those things where a TTRPG is like a video game. It really is, but there's more camaraderie because you have to work together in this narrative and if you don't everyone dies i mean you make a character that you want to and more or less you play as that character like any other rpg game you make a character you play as that character but you're doing it as you and you have to use your voice and your uh it, it's, it's interesting Adv advice is to just simply play one i mean it's really hard to give advice for a TTRPG because I'm more of a roleplay narrative kind of guy. While other guys will give you like combat um, advice, like how to build and all that fun stuff. Um, I mean, just play one. That's, that's all I can say is play one and put your toe in the water and see how it feels. You know, because there are a ton of TTRPGs out there. I'm all, I am a very small minnow in a very large pond. And, yeah, I mean, just just give one a try. That's, that's all I can really say. Advice is try one. <laughs> um, Veil Riders related questions. Are there cultures of the Veil folk that heavily resemble some of those of the human world so similar to those on our side, but both customs and language of the Veil because they were culturally maybe even genetically affected by past visitors from our side of the Veil? Yeah, so there are. Um, the Serbnians are affected. Um, the Orcs are affected. And... That's really about it, per se. Um, it would be it would be accurate as well as to say there are cultures on the veil side that were affected. Oh, sorry, cultures on the human side that were affected by the veil side, like Orden. Orden, more or less, he kind of like took the 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 Danes and the Swedes and all of them under his wing in a way, and, and kind of like used them to poke fun at. Uh, at the at the Fey, that's that's, an, that's a that's a story in the future. I'm gonna kind of drop hints to and all that, but more or less, both sides were affected by both sides. So that's that's kind of the the cut and short of it. Are the languages spoken by the elves and dwarves Indo-European in origin, or they or or are they like Finnish and Basque, which have a lot of borrowed words from Indo-European languages? Okay, um, so again some languages no some languages yes um the um dwarven language for sure is um you, you you could say that something else borrowed from the dwarven language really thanks to orden but i want but that's that's a, that's a lot of storyline i don't want to uh, story and lore i don't want to give here because it should be in the book you know it'd be, it'd be a lot of spoilers to say it right here but yes question mark are there other countries other than the U.S. that have found their own veil portals? Uh, yeah, so right now the veil is simply in the U.S. still. It's, it's being held there. 
But through the years, the veil has jumped around. I mean, it first was in the Black Forest. It was in France. It was in Saudi Arabia. I mean, the, 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 the veil has popped around boop, 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 all, all over the place. It is simply now being held kind of captive in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, so, yeah. Um, will we ever get to see them fight against or alongside either the UN or the Veil Riders or even some independent kingdoms they're trying to turn to a client state? You'll have to wait and find out, bud. Is the old Fae Doobie met and befriended in the, ga in, in the game with the auxiliary team that went into the ruins a simp of the queen? Um... So, Lord Grey is a fae where he was tasked with staying back and rebuilding and currying favor for the queen with those who survived the Great War. Issue is, is that he had to go underground because they're trying to hunt down and kill all things fae. And he, at first he had a pretty large Southern Elf army who began to slowly leave over time because to them, the, the, the queen wasn't coming. So he's been hearing for, for, for his life, the queen's not coming, the queen's not coming. But he still felt it was his duty to stay there and still try and curry favor, even even if he was all by himself. So I wouldn't say he's a simp with the queen. He was simply not really a simp, but more of a... He, he, he felt attached to to duty, you know, and felt it, 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 he was charged with this task. He's going to do this task to his false ability. And simply was worn down by time. That will be all for now. Really like this segment of you reading your question of our questions, regardless of whether or not it's very personal, general, or specific, or to the lore of your stories. Keep it up, guard, or should I say, guard daddy? LMFAO, please don't break my spine. It's too late. I already know where you fucking live. <laughs> hey, my name's Redacted. I main my main question is about necromancy if it's you staying in the Veil Rider universe. My second question is if blood is being used so much, why don't mages just sit near a battle with and and an Alucard's words get their sip on? So more or less, um, blood is a very particular thing. Everyone has their own blood. To consume someone else's blood is like trying to put a positive blood in an a negative body. It's gonna work kind of, but not as well as it should, if at all. Not to mention, not all blood is really magical. Like, I was having a book, like, if you just fucking cope in a goblin and suck down, you might not get anything, if, 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 if but it, you may make it something, but, it, but more likely you get nothing at all, because it's not very magical blood. Everyone's blood has its own, like, concentration of magical influences, really. And as much as people want to just have, like, a blood bag around them, unless that, unless that, I guess the only real way to have a blood bag in this in this universe would have like a twin. I think if you had like a twin who had the same blood type and the same blood like chemistry and all that, you could possibly just suck them down, you know, have a straw and cast big old magics, but even then, I mean that'd be like super hardcore like heresy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like really, really frowned upon. As for necromancy, it's kinda of the same way. So General necromancy is one of those things where, to, in my eyes, my non-professional eyes, it was never done correctly. They just animate a body and call it a day. Well, what's keeping that body going? What commands it? You know, because if the brain's rotted, what's doing it? And in my eyes, necromancy should be done in a very distasteful way. So, in the Veil universe, all the souls of the fallen and dead return eventually to the core and are then reincarnated into someone else and with necromancy you have to literally steal that soul away and rebind it to a corpse it is possible but ain't no one gonna like that shit the gods themselves i know cringe uh or lure and um i believe where is she not Phenitri. uh I think it's Rotos or Ryan. One second, one second, one second. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is that stinking? Itis, that's right. So, like, a lot of the gods, they, they know that there, there, there is, a, there is a, a system to life. And you, as a necromancer, are sticking your dick in that system and kind of fucking... <laughs> They're literally like helicoptering your dick in the system, and this is frowned upon. And plus, you have to take the soul, which is bound back for reincarnation, stealing it, and then rebinding it to a body. 
and then that soul is aware so the soul is then kind of manipulating and using this dead body that's being powered by your magic but they're moving it because that's their body they only they can move it so the soul is aware the entire time of what they're doing and what's happened but also are controlled by you so they know they're under control they know they're being resurrected and they know they have no choice so you're very slowly torturing the soul day by day in this macabre puppet of their old body so my necromancy is far more darker it's far more gritty as necromancy should be you're not just raising a body and making it move around and serve you wine you are taking a soul destined for the core in reincarnation stealing it rebinding it and then controlling it so a bit different this email is a bit shit posty, but I do want to ask, do you still have hope of a somewhat better future for the current generation, or are you like me who thinks that things aren't going to get good again? Like, do you also think that the current generations are just fucked, or do you think there's a chance for us to have a somewhat positive road ahead? Also, while the audience might not see my email, you can guard. I really doubt it would take very much effort for you. <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. So, because, because of your email, if anything. But, um, No. No, the the current generation has, has not suffered enough. They they're, they're, they they've been given too much leeway, too much pleasure, too much leisure. They're not they're they're too soft. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter because all hear, hear that rain. My goodness, all things come in cycles. Um, as as the old meme goes, good uh, bad times create hard men hard men create good times good times create soft men soft times create hard times um unless there's a huge event that causes this generation to harden up to understand that life isn't all fucking poggers and fucking <laughs> fortnite tokens or whatever the fuck they do they're they're going to keep thinking that life is easy peasy lemon squeezy but they're not suffering enough there's none of hardship the like they don't understand that outside the 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 gates of these first world countries is hardship there are still people starving to death in this on, on this fucking planet dude like and they don't understand that but no at at the current rate we're at the current rate we're heading for a downfall just as rome was you get you get too set in your laurels you get too complacent and then everything just bursts down around you and we we were due for sure and it's at an accelerated rate as well so i don't think things are going to get good again until they get bad i'm one of those people who believe that in order for good times you need hard times for for a good society you need hard people and that's just what i think and there are not enough hard people right now. Hey, guard bro. Cheers for all the good stories. Long may they continue. I guess my question is, if, if it even counts as one, my country is going to hell in a handbasket, debt piling high, economy in shambles. We've been mostly disarmed. Government is taking more and more power and imposing more restrictions on us all. But so many people are ignoring or even cheering the red horse on. Is it possible to fix? Is there any point in even trying to? Or should we just hide in the ranges where the hunting is still decent and hop and hope the worst blows over and try to rebuild later? Cheers. A poor bastard in what looks like Venezuela, South Pacific condition too. Um, Jesus, that's such a hard question. It's gotten to the point where people favor, like I said in the last post, they, they, they want these, these earthly pleasures. They, they just want to be comfortable. They don't understand you can't be comfortable. You, you, you can't have comfort in in in, in safety this doesn't happen it's I, would, I think it was something that uh benjamin franklin said to that, to that fucking degree like i mean it's just complacency like why should i worry about the debt in the economy i'm just joe schmo and i would eat my fried chicken and watch the show in the football game like it's just, it's just that that mentality it's all the wrong mentality i mean you could I mean, if you get tired of it, and there are enough tired people, I mean, sometimes, like like toddlers, violence is the only thing they understand. Violence is the, the oldest way of expressing oneself, and unfortunately, as we saw with the particular riots, um, 
it can do bad, it can do good. But the thing is, it has to be constructive violence. It has to be like, I'm doing this for this reason, for the betterment of everybody, not just one person, not because out of self-greed. It sounds dumb, but revolution is really hard. <laughs> um, hitting the reset button is really hard because you have to find like-minded people who are selfless. The hardest part is finding selfless people who will do what needs doing just because it needs to be done. Not out of self-want or self-greed or self-desire. Simply by, simply by knowing, I need to do this because it needs to be done. And that's your first hurdle, man. That's your first hurdle. And the thing is, governments know that. Governments know that. If they keep you from being able to 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 cause the violence, they can stay in power forever. They keep you comfortable. They keep you sedated. They keep you complacent with this fried chicken and football Sundays, and then people become complacent and fat and happy at where they are. They don't understand they're in a box. They think the sunshine lamp is real sunshine, but you. You gotta ask yourself, what can you do? Do you punch out and go somewhere else? Do you flee to somewhere else? Or do you know what needs to be done and take fate into your own hands? And that is a question only you can ask yourself and only you can answer. I cannot do it for you. In the end, you could just wait for all the blow over, for the collapse and the eventual rebuild. Or you can... Put that hammer in your own hand. It's up to you. And I cannot answer that for you. Dear Garbro, first off, shout out to the Discord for as much as they unsettle me. Sometimes they are decent people who have helped me get through this lockdown I'm currently in. My question is... Oh, I, I know who you are. <laughs> My question is, if you are burnt out, is it bad to have a mentality of, as long as the world is turning, it will keep going? I've recently been told that is a bad way of thinking, but clearly have there's no alternative if something else changes... Also got my flatmate to start reading the book. He wants to know your favorite Viking fact. My favorite Viking fact is that they were very clean. <laughs> Vikings had nose hair pickers, trimmers, brushes. They were actually very stylish people from what we can tell. From what you can tell by the Vikings, they were they were pretty fucking dapper. And then I believe it was people were pissed that Vikings were stealing females from other places by looks and because they didn't smell. <laughs> Like, like you, we, we, we can't confirm it, but, you know, stories and, and, and discoveries, they're pretty clean folk. As for your discussion, or your question, as long as the world is turning, I will keep on going. How is that a bad, how is that a bad, bad mindset? How is that a bad, a, a bad mindset? That, make, that makes no sense. If you're burnt out, you're burnt out. If your candle burns bright, you will turn to coal eventually, but you, you always relight. You always come back. No no one's burnt out forever. If you're burnt out, you go, I'm going to tap out for X many days or X many weeks, and then I'll be back. Because the thing is, what your, your, your mentality is true. Uh, if you are burnt out and you're, you know, like, I need a moment, the world is going to keep turning. The world's not going to end because you're burnt out. You're not going to turn the ash and fade away to nothing because you're burnt out. No, the world's going to keep turning, and so will you. As long as the world is turning, I will keep on going. There's nothing wrong with that. Whoever told you the better way of thinking is going to be smacking the fucking nuts. That is not a bad way to think. Because I want to break down that phrase into what I think it means. No matter how bad things are, no matter how bad things get, how tired you are, how depressed you are, how sad you are, how happy you are, the world is going to keep turning, and so will you. You will turn with it. That's a great mindset to have. That's how you pull yourself out of depression. You go, you know what? I am am still going forward. Each day progresses and I progress with it. Why shouldn't you think that as long as the world is turning, I will keep on going? That should pull you out of depression. That should pull you into the sunlight. I don't know why they told you it's a bad way of thinking. Who the fuck says that that's a bad way of thinking? It's like a fucking sheep to me. I mean, 
you'll, you, you, in my opinion, you don't need a fucking alternative. You, you have the right mindset. As long as the world is turning, I will keep on going. As for being burnt out, I mean, people get burnt out. I mean, we, 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 I mean, even computers, when their RAM gets full, what do you do? You shut them off for a bit and let them recycle. Sometimes you just gotta turn off. There are times where, out, like, like during writing these books, like, I, I'll, I'll go, you know what? I just need today for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. People feel this kind of kind of guilt for taking a day for themselves. No, if you are burnt out, you go, I just need today for me. You make a coffee, a warm snack, watch a few movies, take a fucking nap. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with going, I just need today. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone should say, I am tired. I just need today. And then I'll have tomorrow as well. And a day after that, and a day after that, and things keep turning. As long as the world is turning, I will keep on going. But today, I just need today for me. And you know what, world? I'll give you tomorrow. But today, I just need it for me. There's, there's nothing wrong with thinking that. If you, if, if, you were, if you or other people are burnt out, there's nothing wrong with going, I just need today for myself. I just want to rest Sometimes you just want to sit down and do nothing. Now, don't do nothing for too long or you start digging a hole in that seat. But if you're busy and you're burnt out and you, and you, you just want a day, there's nothing wrong with just taking a day for you. I mean, I mean, we... <laughs> We're social creatures. I tell folks, you've heard me say that we're pack animals, but even pack animals have a little me time. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with having a day. Nothing wrong with taking a day. There's nothing wrong with saying to the world, world, I've given you the last four weeks, and I will give you tomorrow, but just give me today. And you have a nap, and you watch a movie, you sit on the couch, you watch a video, you play a video game, you just have a day for yourself, and that will get you unburnt. It will. Sometimes, like me, I need a lot of days. But at the same time, I will give the world months. <laughs> I'll tell the world, I will give you this year. Just give me this month to recover. And I will give you all I have. You know what? I like the way your mentality is. As long as the world is turning, I will keep on going. No matter how bad it is, or what's on fire, or how bad things are around you, as long as the world is turning, so will I. I like that. That's a good way to think. And whoever told you the bad way of thinking, fuck that person. <laughs> they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I'll tell you that right now. Alright, and, and I think I am caught up with all the questions that got sent in. So, listeners, like I said midway through... I, I am he, I, I am here for you. I, I will try to be. If you want to talk to me directly, I'll give you my cell phone number. I ain't afraid. I, I'm not afraid of, of, of helping people. There's a another Viking fact. But it's more like rules of life or ethos or wisdoms. And there are, there are, there are a few I like to I like to bring up here, and that is that a good friend speaks truly from the heart. The one whose speech is always, like, nice and pleasant cannot be, like, taken for face value or trusted. It's just, sometimes you need the hard truth and a soft lie. There's another where it's like, what will your history say about your life? What will be left behind when you die? And how will you have made the world better with your presence? And that you should always ask these questions daily and if I can help you guys like I'm I'm a very very small fish in a very very large pond but if I can help you guys get through your day better deal with life better I will consider that a life well had time well spent and I see no waste in it whatsoever it's one of those things where you have to think of ourselves as like a candle I mean a single candle blown out stays blown out forever, but a candle surrounded by other candles, if you get blown out, someone else can relight you. Someone else can help you get your light back. And if need be, 
I'll be your candle. I don't mind. All you have to do is ask, and I will do what I can. I may, <laughs> I may draw some weird things and get large donations, but I, but I, I can't always help financially. But if I can, I will. If you need the hard truth, I will tell it to you without a blink. And if you need to someone to talk to, as the dark encroaches upon your eyes and soul, I'll be your candle in the light if need be. Because sometimes that's just all we need. Someone to talk to. And it's best to talk to someone now before it's too late. Because unfortunately, there are some actions you can't take back. And folks think that in the end, no one will remember them as they do these actions. But it leaves a stain that you have no idea, and you have no idea how far it'll reach. So, I guess in, clo in closing of this video and all these questions, Garbro is here, and he will listen. All you gotta do is ask. Until I see you next time on this side of the veil, stay safe out there.